Snails are some of the most bizarre creatures that we share this planet with. And in today's episode of The Wild Report, we are searching for the second largest species of terrestrial snail on planet Earth. To find one of these colossal mollusks, we are going to be exploring the island of Kauai, Hawaii, one of the many areas around the world where these snails have been introduced by humans. Oh, check this out, that thing is huge. This is what we're after. That is the giant African land snail. Let me go ahead, pick this thing up. We'll get it to a good filming location. It's huge, <laughs> look at that. This is actually the largest species of terrestrial snail on planet Earth. The fully grown adults might have body lengths of up to eight inches, and their shell diameter is sometimes five inches. Now, I know it's in the common name, but these snails did not originate on the Hawaiian Islands. So how the heck did a snail from Africa make it to Hawaii? Because they have these really beautiful and intricate shells, humans thought they would make a great addition to their gardens. So they brought them over as an ornamental species here, and then their population absolutely exploded, and now they are found on all of the major Hawaiian islands. Now, despite their enormous size, these snails are gentle giants. They are completely herbivorous, and they are known to eat over 500 different species of plants. And back in their native range, many of the plants have developed chemical or physical defenses to prevent predation by snails. But here on the Hawaiian Islands, of course, that is not the case because these are a non-native species. So what happened is, after introducing these snails because they looked pretty, humans realized, huh, these are actually eating all of the plants in my garden, and not only that, they're eating the native vegetation here on the islands. So they tried to remove them by introducing another invasive species, the rosy wolf snail, which, guess what, was too small to eat the giant snails, so instead, those wolf snails ate the native Hawaiian tree snails. Now, snail biology is pretty interesting. These animals are actually mollusks, so they're in the same phylum as many of the species that we associate with living in the ocean. And as terrestrial mollusks, they do breathe air, and they of course exist outside of the water, but they do need to remain moist in order to stay alive. And so to do that, they actually excrete a mucus layer very similar to what maybe a salamander or a frog would excrete to both protect them from desiccation and to boost their immune system and protect them from foreign pathogens. Now to move around, these snails have one foot, which is basically the entire bottom of the part of their body that sticks out of the shell here. And you'll also notice that on their head, they have four different appendages, which we call tentacles. So these two larger tentacles, these are actually the eye stalks, and they do have eyes. They are very, very simple eyes, and they can't see much, but they do have them. And then those two smaller secondary tentacles, those are mostly for feeling. But snails, they do have awful eyesight. They actually have a very acute sense of smell or chemoreception, and that is how they find food and other snails. Now these shells really are intricate and quite beautiful, and they come in a pretty wide variety of colors, but they're always going to have this distinctive kind of tapering whorl to them. And the snails actually make these shells themselves. The way they do it is they actually secrete layer after layer of calcium carbonate from their mantle, which is the part of their body that's inside the shell, and they build that up layer by layer over time until they have these beautifully constructed shells. Now these shells, of course, help protect them from predation, but they also act as a refuge for these snails during a time of drought. When most other invertebrate species risk drying out, they have to retreat underground, but these snails can simply retreat inside their shells, seal off the opening with a layer of mucus, and brumate there for months if they have to while they wait for the next rainfall, which is part of how they became so invasive. Additionally, these snails can lay about 2,500 eggs a year, which definitely didn't hurt their ability to colonize these islands. So as an invasive species here, the primary thing that these snails do that is bad for our ecosystems is eat the native vegetation. And because they have no natural predators here and these plants have no natural protections from the snails, it's basically an all-you-can-eat salad buffet for these guys. Now, no eradication attempts have been made here since the introduction of the rosy wolf snail, but in Florida, where these are occasionally an introduced species, they have seen success with pesticide applications that basically dry them out and kill them. Now, they haven't tried that here on the Hawaiian Islands, 
and I don't know if they ever will because these populations are pretty much everywhere and they exist at such high densities that they would be using an absolute ton of pesticides to try and get rid of them. And of course we know that high levels of pesticides are not great for the environment either. As a conservation biologist, it's really hard for me to say that I support an invasive species, but at this point I think they're well established enough that actually trying a widespread pesticide application might do more harm to the ecosystem than these pretty inoffensive herbivores. However, they are potential vectors of the rat lungworm parasite, which can cause meningitis in humans and pets, so there is kind of this zoonotic disease perspective that might warrant an attempted eradication. And although they are invasive, I can't help but appreciate how beautiful and complex these organisms really are. Definitely one of the coolest mollusks I've ever seen. I really hope that you enjoyed learning about the giant African land snail, and here's your sneak peek at the species that will be featured in the next episode of The Wild Report. Until next time, stay curious and keep adventuring everywhere. This is Ben Zeno of The Wild Report, signing out.